Ladies and gentlemen, it is fantastic to have you here back again in the workshop because today we're going to be working on another collaboration project with Dustin Panner. He's got an awesome YouTube channel, incredible builds, and as you can see on his channel banner, he is also a fan of making stuff. And what we're going to make today, or I should say the collaborative project, what is it? I am going to make some Damascus steel hand plane blades or irons, and he is going to make the plane bodies themselves. Okay, so that's in the fire doing its first normalizing cycle. What we're gonna do, we're gonna, you know, as, as you've seen before, we're gonna grind it, we're gonna cut it, we're gonna stack it. But first of all, let's get a little flashback, a little replay of what happened yesterday. Ah, yes, that's right. Jamie swung a hot piece of steel, the blade that he was making, the Bowie knife that he was making, straight into this awfully expensive lens. Well, I had the camera pretty close to the anvil, you know, that, that's true, but thank goodness, let me tell you this, thank goodness I had a lens filter on, because he smashed this, the lens filter broke, the lens is okay, but by smashing the lens filter, he's made a big old dent, and so it can't unscrew. Of course, the glass is smashed, but I need to unscrew this still, and I can't. Thankfully, Adam Savage made a YouTube video for the Tested channel where he unscrewed it, so I have a little bit of an idea about what it is that I'm gonna do to unscrew this. Okie dokie. Stuff a latex glove in there so we don't damage the extraordinarily expensive lens. And into the lens filter we cut. Right, let's, uh, let's see if this works. Break a ruler. Oh boy, this isn't working. I don't like doing this. Ah! It's not working. Come on! Ah! Ah. Oh no, that's making it worse. That's not good. I'm breaking it. I'm doing a bad job. Prying that open. Bad idea. Terrible idea. Really not good idea. Oh goodness. <gasps> oh! Oh, I have movement. So I want to see if I think that actually isn't a problem. And maybe I can. Yes, I think I can just break it. <gasps> have we done it? Oh, yes. Okay, I've got the filter out, but I'm not going to be able to get another filter on because there is a ding, a big old ding, might I add. There is a big old ding right here from where the impact happened. So I need to work out how I straighten that out without damaging the threads themselves. So here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to take this piece of filter. I'm going to get it inside the threads as best I can. And with the lens threads hopefully protected by the filter thread, I might be able to pry this back out. Hope I haven't crossed thread. Cross threaded it. No, we're good. Okay, well, 30 minutes later, it doesn't work amazingly. I pulled it out a little bit and I've just been working it on there back and forth. I think the body of this here is aluminium and so the threads are semi malleable and are somewhat working to the conformity of, uh, of the threads on a filter. And uh, I think this will work. It's not perfect, the, thread, the thing doesn't go all the way on, but hey, now I can at least get a filter on there and, uh, and hopefully save damaging this lens even more. It's time now to go back to the grinding room and start grinding this thing and getting it ready for the next stack. This thing, not the lens, the, we're not grinding the lens, we're grinding the billet of steel for the planes. So 
as you can see what I've done, normal stuff. I couldn't use the bandsaw because yesterday I snapped the blade. No! Ow, ow, ow. So I used the angle grinder to grind it and then the chop saw to cut it up. And I wanted to cut it up into nine pieces to do a big nine-way stack. However, the adjustable square that I was using, well, halfway through I noticed that it had slipped. <sighs> so I have nowhere near um, accurate cuts, which means that the nine way that I wanted isn't going to be able to happen because dividing it by nine and then having the first half of the pieces be longer uh, than the second half of the pieces, it didn't work out. What we're going to do instead is we're going to do a six way. And so, of course, we're going to go into the ferric chloride for a test etch on all the ends so that we can look at the pattern and organize it how we want. All I've done is taken that billet where we had pattern coming upright, pattern coming from the sides, forged it down. We're then going to organize it. We're going to create a relatively, uh, relatively, I don't know the best way to describe it, but we're going to create an interesting pattern. So this is what the pattern looks like right now on all of them. So I'll just transfer them over to the bicarbonate of soda, give it a little normalizing cycle. But what am I talking about? It's not normalizing. Neutralize the acid. There we go. That's the one. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and find the most interesting way to arrange the pattern in this formation. You can see even like this, it's far less than ideal because that last one is just that far out of dimension. Okay, this is going to be interesting to look at the pattern once that's welded together. We have the same thing going on at either end and then the opposite here in the middle. It's now time to tack weld it all together, put a handle on it back in the forge, forge weld it, start getting it ready for the next stack. <laughs> So I have ground the piece and I cut off a little sliver. I gave it a test etch and I had a look at what it looked like and it looked like this. And frankly, I'm a little disappointed. I don't really like how the pattern looks. I think it's a little boring. I didn't think it through right and you make mistakes and sometimes things don't turn out how you want. So anyway, we continue. We persevere. Maybe we make something good. We'll see. I cut the billet of steel up into six. And so of course, here we are again ready for our test etch in the ferric chloride so that we can hopefully arrange it so that when we do the next stack, we get a pattern that's a little bit more interesting. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Now uh, take it from the ferric chloride uh, and then we'll neutralize the acid. And there we go. Let's have a look. How's it looking? How's she looking? I have an idea. I think this could be interesting. Okay, let's see what we can do when we do it this way. Ugly. So we're gonna let that cool down nice and slow, turn the burners down, get a little bit of a cooler flame. And I do indeed have burners for sale on the website, alexsteelblacksmith.com. And tomorrow we're gonna be continuing with the DP Makes Stuffs irons for the planes that he's going to make. It's going to be a really exciting project. Here's a channel link in the description below for him so that you can go and subscribe because once I make these things and send them to him, I am just extraordinarily thrilled to see the awesome planes he makes from them. I'm looking forward to seeing how this Damascus turns out tomorrow. What we're going to do is we're going to be stacking that up nice and tall, then taking some slices off it. I should have bandsaw blades back on the Bailey bandsaw. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to see you tomorrow on the next episode. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure 
you go and click the link to DP Make Stuff and subscribe to him so that you can see him make the planes. And I will see you tomorrow.